Welcome back to another episode of the Ink and Impact podcast. Today, I am so honored to have guest author on here, Lori Ann Wood. Welcome, Lori Ann. Oh, thank you, Daylene. It's so good to be here. Today, we were going to talk a little bit about power of story, but also taking thoughts from personal journaling and turning that into a book. I know you have a really interesting way of doing that with your newest book. Let's start with Power Story. What do you think is the impetus for that power? Mm. You know, when I started writing the book, I started writing shorter pieces and I imagined myself taking that and making it into a full-fledged nonfiction book. The whole basis of the book is my heart failure journey. And it was a sudden and unexpected diagnosis that I had no family history and no risk factors, but it wasn't everyone's story. It was an unusual story. And so I struggled with how to make it useful for other people. And as I started writing these short pieces, I was just trying to make sense of things myself. And I was bringing in pit, bits and pieces of my childhood or raising young children or being newly married. And that was what people were reaching out and they were saying, you know, our stories aren't the same. My story is not your story, but that sounds like my story because you brought in these pieces that people could relate to. I put in details. I remember one of the stories included my lunchbox that I had when I was a kid. And one of the readers reached out and said, I have that same lunchbox. And so there were these little sparks of connection that made the reader trust me more because I was revealing parts of their past that they remembered. And so I really dove into that idea of story. And what I found was it wasn't the same story that everyone had, but it sort of rhymed with their story. Overlaps connected me to readers and they wanted to come back again and say, oh, I wonder what else about her story is similar to mine. Jesus taught in stories. That's the way he got across his most important ideas was through story. And so I really leaned into that and tried to show a lot of vulnerability in that and some empathy. I love story. So I think when someone will open up with a story and it's something about their own life and they're vulnerable and they're willing to share that, it's like there's a crack in that veneer. and you see a real person in there and that makes that person someone you want to read more from. Yes, I agree. When I was reading through your book, the story of when you were, I believe, five years old and running away. And even though I never <laughs> actually had the guts to run away, I thought about it as a young child. Yeah. I think almost everyone can relate to that. And of course, your running away wasn't very far, right? It was to the pasture. <laughs> it's so innocent looking back but so relatable. And it brings back that initial hurt that mm. led you to want to run away. Right. And I think overall the themes are connecting with people, right? Mm. It's the, yes, your actual experience might have differed from mine, but there's always an underlying challenge, an underlying hurt. And I love how you divided your book into three overarching questions which are relatable to challenges, right? And do you want to share with the listeners what those life questions are? Yeah. So the way that came about was after I had written and I was just writing what was coming out of my heart in little fits and starts and writing them down. And I put them on sticky notes and I thought, what am I going to do with all of these little bits that I've written? And I remember reading in the Bible about Jesus going into the desert right before his public ministry. And it was about then that I realized that all of these essays I had sort of had one of three themes to them. And those three themes were the three, we call them temptations, but they were really just internal questions that Jesus was asking himself in the desert. And so I started to think, maybe I have something here. Maybe 
the questions that we all ask when we get what I call detoured into the desert or, and it could be a relationship or a financial detour or career detour. Mine was a health detour, but we start to ask those three questions. The first one I call the question of worry. And that question is, is this life all there is? And so all the times where I was wrestling with things like loss and uncertainty and fear, I group those under that topic. And that relates to when Jesus was in the desert and Satan said, eat the, turn these stones into bread, because he was considering whether he should just concentrate on what's happening physically. And that was the impetus for that first section. And then the second section was where Satan said, if you will jump from this cliff, basically, I know that God will catch you and you won't be harmed. And so I was wrestling with that too, because I was thinking, I'm God's child and he surely won't let me be harmed. He's going to protect me. And so that question then became, is God always good? I know he's there, but what's happening doesn't feel very good. And so I took a bunch of essays and a bunch of writings from that idea and put those into the second section. The third section was from Jesus's third temptation, where Satan basically told Jesus to bow down and all of these kingdoms will be yours. And the question came out of that, is God's plan enough? And I was looking at things in my own life, like disappointment and failure and waiting. And so those essays became that third section of the book. And while they didn't always give concrete, definitive answers, what I tried to do was let the reader have permission to ask their own questions as they go through there. Yes, I like that so much. A lot of times we might think that it's it's not good to question God, but I don't know that we're actually questioning God as much as questioning the circumstances that we're in. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to come to him with everything. Mm -hmm. And he already knows what we're thinking, but he wants us to trust him enough to share it with him ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think your book is a beautiful picture of what it's like to honestly struggle through these questions. You do a great job of inviting the reader to do that as well. So that was really, really good. I had copied down a quote that you had written and you said, I still struggle with questions almost daily, but rather than seeing them as a threat to my faith, I see them as a lifeline to keeping it. I thought that was a powerful statement. Do you still feel that way? I do, because my backstory is that I've been a Christian all my life. I was raised in a Christian home and a wonderful upbringing, raised my children in the church. But when I got on this detour, these really basic questions were nagging at me. At first, I felt a little bit like a fraud or a little bit guilty because I'm thinking, how can I be this far into my faith and my life and still have such basic questions? But back to that idea of vulnerability, I found that when I started asking those questions out loud in my writing, people who I had seen as longtime solid Christians were saying, I'm struggling with that. I still ask that question. What I found was that when people will hit those questions head on, they will come out with a stronger faith because the alternative is to just go, ooh, there's a big question. I'm just going to walk away from faith because it doesn't seem like it works out. Heading them head on and wrestling with them and contending with God, we come out of it stronger. And God's on our mind every day as we're asking those questions. I think that's one of the main ideas of the book is questions. I don't know that I saw it when I first started writing the book, that that's what I was doing. But I later learned when I was researching my book proposal that two thirds of American adults who profess to be Christians say that they question God. And 22 million of those people turn to books to answer their questions. And so that gave me the idea that questions are a big deal 
I saw also in the general book market that society sort of shifting away from having definitive answers to everything and giving permission to ask a question in a constructive way. And so my goal was to find a way to take that curiosity and if you want to call it doubt from all of these Christians and help them find a way to embrace those questions rather than run from them or hide from them or pretending they don't exist and use them to strengthen their faith. So that was my goal. And that was why I leaned so heavily into the idea of questions, because in my own personal experience, it had strengthened my faith. Those are some powerful statistics. While you were speaking, I was thinking how important it is for the listeners that especially if you feel called to write a book, you don't have to have all the answers, mm -hmm. but it point people to the one who does, that is what's most important. Address what God has placed on your heart, whatever the story is, whatever the message is, whether you're writing fiction or nonfiction, have the courage to step out and write it because Lorianne, I'm sure you can attest to this, that writing a book isn't always easy. And there's a lot of self-doubt that goes in the writing process as well. But if we're willing to put in the effort and follow God's leading, there are blessings on the other side of that. Yes. Sometimes things that we don't even recognize as we're writing. Yes. It reminds me, I think a lot of people are this way, but I always felt like I had this book inside me, but I had children. I had a job. I had all of these things that had nothing to do with writing. And I thought someday when I know enough, when I'm an expert on something, I'm going to write a book because I just feel this, I just feel like I have a book inside me. I love the quote I came across early and it's attributed to anonymous, but the quote is not all storms come to destroy your life. Some storms come to clear your path. Mm. I think that certainly applies in my writing journey because I had taught college for 20 something years. And after I got heart failure, I couldn't stand up. I didn't have the energy and the stamina to lecture for two or three hours at a time, but I could sit and type all day long. And although at first I didn't see that it was a book, because again, I didn't think I was an expert at anything, it became a book. And I think by leaning into that and following where your writing's going, because I certainly did not sit down at my computer the first time and say, I'm going to write a book of Christian essays about the three questions that every life confronts. Okay. <laughs> I would never have thought that. But that's what the writing that was inside me came out to be. Part of that was me coming to accept that the book was something that was apart from me. I was being used to write that book, but it wasn't something that I had always thought in my mind since I was a little girl, I was going to write a book about ABC and now here it is. So had you finished all of the essays and then finally decided it was going to be a book or how did that come about? I was probably 75% finished. I didn't understand exactly. I knew it was going to be a book about these three questions. I wanted my medical story. I didn't want it to be the overarching theme of the book, but I wanted it to be woven throughout the book. So I did a lot of tweaking with the format because what ended up happening was in each of those three questions, each question made up a section of the book, like we talked about. And within each section, I included little snippets of journal entries so that the reader could follow my story if they wanted to. But if they weren't interested in it, there was enough stories from my childhood, adulthood, and teaching throughout there that they didn't have to follow and be that interested in the medical story. And they actually went through my story three times because I went from diagnosis to current day in each section so that they could revisit and know that I was struggling with the same questions over and over and over. I wasn't finished with a question of doubt and that was resolved. I was coming back to it again and again and again. That's an encouragement, I think, for a lot of people to know it's okay to not arrive at that final answer. So when you were... Putting this together, 
and organizing it and everything. Were you planning to traditionally publish or were you wanting to self-publish? At what point did you make up your mind about the publishing aspect of it? Yes. So I worked with a writing coach and we talked through and came up with how the book would lay out. And I felt good about that. Even before I worked with a writing coach, I had started submitting book proposals to agents and publishing houses. As I worked with her though, she said, you know, I can help you self-publish it if it's something that you want to go ahead and get out in a shorter time frame. And so I was on this path to self-publish. I had done all of my developmental edits and I hadn't heard back from any publishers or agents. Then in November of 2021, I did hear back from a small Christian publishing house and they said, if your book is still available, we would like to acquire it. And so I decided at that point that I would go with them. That was a relief to me because with my energy level and me having to decide how I spend my days, I didn't know that I wanted to spend it learning how to self-publish. I would have if I had to, but that was a relief. So they acquired it in November, 2021. And it came out in February, 2023, a few months ago. So it's been a good experience in my mind. I would get an agent and then that wasn't exactly how it happened. And then I thought I would self-publish and that wasn't <laughs> exactly how it happened. But it's been really good because as a smaller publisher, they've been really open to my input on the cover and all sorts of things. That's fabulous. It's not always our plan, but God's, right? And how right. things work out. I was looking at your introduction and it says, it was never my goal for you to be content just reading my story. My purpose is to impact and empower you to live a better version of your own. And I was wondering if you've had any feedback yet from readers and if that is coming to pass. Yes, it's a book of essays. And so it's just short contained individual stories that have a theme and that really appealed to people because when you're in a health situation or grief or any other kind of trauma, you have a short attention span. And so people love that. But also some of us process a lot by writing and people were asking me, is there going to be space to write in the book? I had never planned for that. So I approached my publisher and I said, this is a last minute ask and it's a big one, but it would be really cool if there could be a companion journal. And so I worked feverishly on it and they made it happen. And so when the book came out, there also came out this companion journal. The book's called Divine Detour and the companion journal is called Navigating Your Own Divine Detour. Of it, they go together and people have been really receptive of that. Some people expect to have a place to process in a book and other people just want a book to read. So it's been a good compromise. What wonderful feedback to then motivate a separate product. That is really a great idea. And like yeah. you said, it sounds like they married very well together. As someone who has wanted to write a book most of your life, I'm assuming that you were a reader. Hmm. And so was there ever any book that really impacted you in some way, like you were hoping your book will impact others? I probably have been most influenced by anything that Frederick Beekner writes, but I think it was from him that I got the idea two things from him. The idea that it's okay to ask questions and it's okay to not come up with a tidy answer to those questions in your writing. Exactly. One of the books that I especially like from him is called Longing for Home. And it just, these small stories that draw you in and allow you to examine your life and your faith. That is what really gave me the idea that maybe what I've experienced could be presented that way. Also, there's a smaller circulation kind of book called Walking Through Twilight, and the author is Doug, and it was one that really opened up my eyes to the idea of being in a situation in life and lamenting that situation and lamenting it in a healthy way 
that encourages people. Sometimes we think of Lament as, oh, it's so depressing and sad and awful. His book really gave me the idea that it can be something that's reaching toward God. It can be something that strengthens you. And so those two books really impacted me in the time when I was writing my book. Thank you for sharing those. I'm not familiar with either of those authors, so I'm going to look those up. I'm wondering too, as this was your first book, and I have many listeners who are working on their first books. Were any overarching tips or suggestions that you had to help them along their journey? Hmm. I think one of the things that, and I've already talked a little bit about this, is be open to what the book wants to be. Like I said before, I thought I needed to be an expert on something, and then I would figure out what that topic was, and then I'd research it, and then write a book, and all of that. And sometimes the book that you need to write is something totally different. So be open to whatever that book might be that might not be what you had envisioned or planned or thought you were even good at. The other thing that's really helped me is to latch on to some writing mentors. I have had so many wonderful mentors and a lot of them were online because I wrote the bulk of my book during COVID, but I have so many people that I have looked up to and formed a relationship with and been able to ask questions. And so that was huge. And a lot of them wrote an endorsement for my book. There's so many things that we can get from being mentored. And then I'm looking forward to being able to mentor someone else as they start writing a new book and they're a new author. And so those are just little side benefits that you don't see coming, but they're just such blessings in this journey because it can get really hard. It can get really discouraging. Even after you have a, a contract and you're past all the rejections, you still have to go through all the edits and it's heavy. And there's the marketing and there's just so much that feels overwhelming. That's so nice to be able to have someone else who's been there to say, you're doing okay. And you'll get through it. Here are a couple of tips to focus on right now. You know, just narrow yes. your focus a little bit. Sometimes we need help with that. Those yes. are great tips. I, I agree entirely with those. I know that in individuals are going to want to connect with you. And I know that you also have a special offer for our listeners. Yes. My website is laurieannwood.com and there's a books page about all of my books. I just have the one, but it's in different formats. <laughs> and I also have the companion journal on there. The offer that I have is something that might spur someone on to figuring out what that book is inside them. It's called The Five Prayers and Promises When You Can't Talk to God. I wrote that when I was really in the throes of what was happening in my heart failure journey, and I felt very disconnected from God. And so I started exploring what was true in the Bible, what is true in my life, what can I lean on? And that started that document, that's how my book started. It's the examining of my mind and my heart that grew into this book. And so it would be a good thing for people to look at and see how you can take some of that early uh, information and actually grow it into a book. That mm -hmm. one is also on my website, but it's at laurieannwood.com slash hope. Listeners, Laurieann is spelled L-O-R-I-A-N-N. And then Wood, W-O-O-D. I'll be having links for all of this in the blog version of this podcast at IncanImpact.com as well. But yes, this is fantastic and super helpful, super encouraging, Laurieann. Thank you for taking the time to come on here and to share about your book and congratulations on that book. Oh, thank you. And I would love to give a copy of the book to a listener. If yeah. you would want to do that, I would love to share it. Yes, we would love that. Details on how you can enter for a chance to win Divine Detour at the end of this episode. So be sure to listen to completion. Thank you so much for your gracious offer, Lorianne. I know it's going to bless someone. Oh, thank you. It's great to visit with you. Same here.